and my body moved as I heard another sound. I spun around. Um, oh, fuck me! Shit. Huh. <laughs> Hello there. Um, I've just realised not showing the avatars. <laughs> God damn it. <coughs> I'm Ash Mannix. And I'm with my... And I'm Cookcell, as always. <laughs> and this has been as smooth an opening as ever. <laughs> I yes! It's so bad. Oh, oh fuck. Make it as awkward as possible. Let's carry on. I was getting good at this. Right, so... um, We're back playing Chaos Heads once again. It's been a while. Um, playing in massive inverted ass uh, commas, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're watching, really. And <laughs> I did see a comment from the last video saying, like, we spent 15 minutes... What did we do? 15 minutes chatting before actually getting anywhere. Or, I can't Wait, remember. hang on a sec, did we? <laughs> there was a comment, and it was um, it was definitely on the Chaos Head. Chaos Head? I keep saying Chaos Head. Chaos, the last episode, we did a Chaos Child. And... I can't... Yeah, it took you guys it's like right. 16 it's... minutes to get through a few lines in this video. <laughs> Funnily enough, that was a comment by a person who's called The House in Fata Morgana. Wait, what? I don't see this here. Anyway. It's on It's on um, Chaos Child Episode 3, or Part 3. Oh, I was looking at 4. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that look, man. I mean, uh, hopefully you enjoy the chat. I mean, that's hopefully what you're, you know part of the reason why you're here i mean you could just play the game yourself i suppose or or go to a playthrough without any commentary um just the but yeah and um, we're back in playing this last last point in the last part you left off on a fucking cliffhanger mate yeah you're like they're, they're about to storm the love hotel which has got some sort of incident taking place in it and you're like Tune in next time, and I'm like, fucking no! Yes, Damn it. I'm getting better at this. Like in the, um, I'm doing a video, I'm doing a playthrough of um, the House in Fata Morgana, and I'm like, yes, I'm picking better points to stop. Um, <laughs> tune in next time on Dragon Ball Z. Actually, it's not that bad. I mean, actually, no, it is as bad as that, isn't it? We do nothing for about an hour, and then we're like, tune in next time <laughs> for another oh. hour of nothing. I think Dragon Ball Z was the most, like, fucking... The freezer fight was the worst offender of that, where it's like, they trade punches for a f 20 minutes, and then it's like, will they continue punching each other? Find out tomorrow! But it wasn't and even... God damn it. It wasn't even 20 minutes of constant punching. It was, like, 15 minutes of showing the scenery. They actually... Yeah. Like, it's only when you look back, because they've got cuts, cuts now. They've, like, made it better now for the... I don't know what it is. The newer... You're thinking of Dragon Ball Z Kai. Yeah. The, the director's cut where they removed content to make it better. Yeah, because they just had <laughs> all this un... Like, it was only when someone was showing... It was on YouTube, I was watching a video showing some of the episodes, and it was, like, literally cutting away to fucking static scenery, just a drawing yeah. of the background. And they did that shit ton of times. I was like, what the fuck, what? How... How the fuck were we entranced to watching this as children? We're just like watching grass, cartoon grass for like five minutes and then Goku and Frieza shoot some energy at each other. Then it cuts to King Kai saying, oh, and then maybe Gohan does some shit. Vegeta whines again. And then there's a couple more punches and then that epic narrator comes back on with that fucking sick guitar riff. Yeah, I... It was that, like the anime was that good that the rest of that bullshit still didn't get in the way of uh, the anticipation to watch the next episode. <laughs> but, um, right, I'm going to switch to the no avatars. We're now going full screen. Um, we are we are finally entering the Chaos Child. Uh, don't, please don't word it like that. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> we are now right, starting yeah, to uh... play the game. The Chaos. game, Chaos yes. Child. Um, let's get into this. Right. This game. This game. <laughs> the Love Hotel. Oh, okay. Right, let's see. So, we went inside the hotel from the rear entrance and hid behind the corner that led to the lobby. 
God, that finger point is really throwing me off. <laughs> it's weird. Ah, oh, yeah, it seems like you should go that way. Um, Maybe that is what it is. This was my first time inside a love hotel, and it was a lot less gaudy than I expected. The name was false advertising. There were no fairies, and no one was dancing. Wait, I'm sorry? This place is called, like, the fairy place or something. Or something like that. All right, fair enough. I thought he meant by love hotel, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's supposed to be fairies in love hotels, don't you know? Um, and hmm. maybe the quiet atmosphere was a selling point. But. Oh, Shinjo Ikari? What? The... Wrong name. <laughs> the quiet was ru ruined by the sound of a police officer screaming into his phone. How dare he ruin the quiet man? He was either confused or just excited because he kept saying the same things over and over again. Something had happened after all. And something bad enough that he needed backup. This is my chance. I could get to the scene before the place was overflowing with cops. We might be able to find an unexpected scoop. Now I'm just going to say this is a fucking bad idea. The guy's literally just called for backup or he's been repeatedly calling for backup. And this guy thinks, excellent. This guy thinks, let's actively interfere with an ongoing incident. With an ongoing... The police haven't secured the area yet. Yes, be obscure. Just explain it, man. <laughs> that cop was in the way. Oh my god. What an asshole. This guy's an asshole. I really, really wish we had some sprites or CG for these cops. Yeah. But then he's around the corner, isn't he? So that's why, maybe. Mm. Whether we took the stairs or the elevator, we need to go through the lobby to get to them. I don't like... Do you know, there's, I'm getting a bad vibe from this girl. She's a facilitator. An enabler. She's just enabling this guy to, like, break into crime scenes. I prefer her to the other girl because she actually has a reasonably sized neck. Dude, no, 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 no. I mean, yes, I agree, but also no, I don't think that makes up for it. Huh? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm also a sucker for winking faces. Oh, the fucking awkward... Why does she always pause, <laughs> pose like that? What the f... <laughs> what? <laughs> She's just like, let's go. I'm never prepared for the back of someone's head in this. Tereka took me by my, by the arm, as if we were a couple, and entered the lobby without trying to hide at all. Why, why? She ignored me and walked straight for the stairs. Mm. Oi! The cop must have seen us, because he yelled at us from behind. <laughs> Don't mind us, just an underage couple trying to get into a love hotel room, man. Come on. Oof. Shit. Probably hadn't seen our faces. Did we run? No, that would make it just looks make us look suspicious. <laughs> he started to mumble into the phone. Did he see them though? Was he talking? He saw to them the... from the back. He he assumed that they were customers, patrons, whatever you want to call them. Hmm. We crossed the lobby without looking back. Did he not notice that they're in school uniform? <laughs> you know, I just realized something, right? Uh, what? These are ultra... Like, I know why... I get the general reason why you get love hotels in Japan. Um, A lot of people live with family, and it's like thin paper walls and privacy. There's not a lot of privacy in a lot of housing and stuff like that, so people come here to do the dirty. We, in, in a kind of more secluded and private place but also it means that you don't have to really have your own place you could be living with your with your family and you could still do the dirty by taking someone to a love hotel I mean we don't have love hotels here but that, you know hotel rooms are done for this as well yeah now that I think about there's, it there's um what was it I was I was told about this recently um it's not like an like a it's not like an day end room it's not like an, something. an infamous sauna that 
<laughs> and then let's, <laughs> let's not get into this. <laughs> oh, I love that story. I love that place. I love your stories, man. All right, for context, near where I used to live, and thank God we don't live there anymore. There was a freaking sauna, which you know advertised and, and itself quotes, as a sauna. Air quotes sauna. It advertised itself as a sauna, but it was highly suspect because it was. How do I put it? I mean, it was in an arcade of flats, you know, residential apartments, um, on top of a line of uh, shops in a high street, basically. I never thought <laughs> about that. It's literally a flat. And, yeah, yeah. And I I know because I remember from some of the guys back in the day, you know, the IRL friends, they were saying that one time they thought, you know, because there was dumb stu- uh, school kids, thought, haha, let's go up the staircase to go into this sauna. And some guy said, Oi, what are you kids doing? And they're like, We want to go get a sauna. Or, uh, you know, he goes, This is not for sauna, this is for fuck. He did while pumping his fists. <laughs> or, like, you know, making a, a, a sort of humping motion. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could like demonstrate it. But I can't. I, I fucking love this story. Uh, uh, yeah, that place got raided by the police several times. Probably something really bad going on there. Might have been some trafficking of people or something horrible. Oh, definitely, wow. definitely some kind of people trafficking. That's unfortunate. Maybe even, like, yeah. Um, but man. <laughs> I love that story, though. Just to, a bunch just to of give kids. you an, uh, like an idea of the kind of fucking <laughs> ends of London I hail from. <laughs> the best. The most cultured, man. The most cultured. I just... I have nothing like that up here, man. I fucking have nothing. I live in the bumfuck middle of nowhere. Um, <laughs> oh. But yeah, I, I had that, that thought. But... <laughs> Oh, look, they even have a little bit of reverb because she's in the hot, uh, stairway. That's good, man. Accurate. Oh, shit, and she was doing that pose again. That was. It, it wasn't bothering you until you thought about it. It's such a st- I don't know why she's angry. I don't know. There's something about her that just unnerves me for some reason. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what my problem is. That's my problem. I have too many problems. But <laughs> besides that... <laughs> There's some I don't like about this girl. Um, the eagerness that she has to like just jump into this mess. She just seems like a liability. Um, it just so happens that our main character is a complete idiot as well. So, I don't know. Uh, that was a close call. My heart was pounding so loud that the noise was making me sick. Could you not tell that we were high school students? No. Even if he only saw us from behind, he'd be able to tell by our uniforms. Why didn't he arrest us? That's what us? I thought. That's what I thought. But then I did think that maybe he thought they're just wearing their uniform as, you know, some sort of uh, fetish? cosplay. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, fetish. My dress up, darling. You too. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a good it's a good idea, man. I, mean, I do. I'm, I'm going to a building school uniform in fucking public. You wear that in the room, not to the room. <laughs> it's efficient, man. <laughs> oh, we're already in the school. Oh, no, nah, I don't want to even think of it. Ah, uh, uh, I remember a joke being said by an uncle about being asked to wear a school uniform, and it was just cringy. It was a joke, but I was just like, please, I don't want to have these type of conversations. You don't want to talk about this with your uncle, man. No, it's not my uncle. I don't have that type of relationship <laughs> with my uncle, so. Yeah. Super. Uh, Maybe he was panicking so much that the thought never occurred to him. Wait, find a room. Did you not think we need a zip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> find a room, close the door, lock it, make yourself comfortable, find some of the equipment that they've prepared for you, zip. <laughs> Have a good time. I can't get over it. Like, I, every time you're just. You always throw that in there at a really horrible time. Zip for them like you, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. A fucking... It's a skill. <laughs> Serica, let... Serica let go of my arm and turned toward me. That's right. Now wasn't the time for thinking about other things. Now was the time to get myself in trouble. Oh, 
他の場所を見ていく警察の応援が来たらそこで切り上げでも警察の様子から見てやっぱり何か事件があったんだ。絶対に取って帰ろう。Something's definitely up. We need to get photos of this crime scene before the police do. Ugh. Okay. Why are you so willing to do all this? My question is where have the other two gone? They probably stayed outside because us two ran in and the other two are sensible.、Mm. It was quiet. The policeman's voice was still drifting up the stairs, but it only made the quiet seem more oppressive. Just like he'd said, the customers had probably been told not to leave their rooms. And the customers are like, What? Free extra time? When?、Um, <laughs> Extension! It was too late for it to matter now, but I was starting to feel a little scared. Come to think of it, something had happened. Maybe the kill was still here? So, you know, Toku, Mother Nonchan to Kenka Shatterundone. Nonchan? Derek's voice was relaxed. It was quite relaxed. I'd take any opportunity to relieve this. I'd take any opportunity to relieve this tension. Kenka te w a k e j a n a y o Your ass. You always ruined the mood. I was sad. No, maybe it was. Demo, mother, could you sit there on the run the show? Kimotia Wakaru Kedo. Nan to Kanaranai Kano. What? As in, he's calling it by his surname. Oh. I want to know what happened because it sounded like they were kind they're related. We'll find out. I know we'll find out. What I wanted to know is what is her first name? Were we told? I don't. Yeah, I think. That footsteps in the back. Let me just.、Uh... It's us going up the stairs. Let's see. We don't have anything that says about the character. No, there's no character fucking thing. I remember this. Unread? Oh.、Mm. This sucks. There、Oof. should be a character thing. Maybe there is, and I'm too stupid to find it. Until... Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Until half a year ago, I called her Nono, her first name. After the incident、Finally. that caused me to leave the dorm, I'd never called her that again. As long as I kept calling her Kurusu, she'd keep being mad at me. It must have been hurting some important part of her. It must have been hurting some important part of her. Okay. We're doing it. Taku. He says that with、oh. it, like, some kind of malice, if you ask me. Like he's doing it intentionally. Yeah, it sounded like he was doing it intentionally. Did she.、Mm. Maybe she was his girlfriend? I'm not expecting that. They seem more like、uh, some kind of family relation. Sister? I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> That's messed up, though. What would have to happen for you to be like, oh, Miss Blah Blah Blah, instead of like, just calling your sister her name? You know, Who knows? asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I knew, we were on the third floor. Derek had gotten ahead of me at some point. Was poking her head around the corner and into the hallway. Um, um, I took out my phone and got ready to record. Oh, this is very.、Uh, It's like Resident Evil. 2010s. Let's get our phone out. What are you talking about? That's nowadays. I know, but from the 2010s onwards. As soon as I went into the third floor hallway, I found myself holding my breath. My heart was pounding even louder than when the cop had yelled at us. I tried to control myself and looked down the corridor. The rooms must have been. Smell. No, smell clean. <laughs> Because they would. Love her, yeah, they would clean it, man. It's like. It's like, remember in、um, My Dress Up Darling when they went to one and it was like spotless? Yeah, because they had just entered the room.、Uh, these guys have been in the room for some time now. I do feel like you have to open the door to get that whiff. 
you know, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you go into a hotel, a normal hotel, you don't smell the lived-in smell of people. rooms and people. At least that you shouldn't be. If you do, then don't go to that hotel. Um, the rooms must have been very big because the gap between the doors was large. The floor was red, sinking into black as the hallway stretched away. Look at that. Mm, spotlights. Lovely. I could hear the unpleasant sound of blowing air. They must have had the air conditioning on. There were no windows and there wasn't a lot of light, so the hallway looked pretty creepy. But there was nothing out of the ordinary about, the, about it otherwise. But still, it was strange. The air felt solid. Solid snake. It felt like someone would jump out from the shadows the second you let your guard down. Or perhaps that there, there were traps scattered everywhere along the floor. For a second, the floor seemed to be stained with blood, but I shook the image out of my mind. <laughs> this feels like a really weird and obscure reference to like MGS1. You know the bit where they go... Like one. It's uh, He looks into the hallway and there's blood splatter everywhere and it's when he come, comes across mm. Grey Fox. Oh yes, I do remember that. What was this? Like the fear you feel in the darkness at night. Was it just because there was so little light? Oh, I'm beginning to get nervous now. Maybe this was a bad idea. No, it was worse than that. <laughs> it felt like someone was watching me and enjoying my unease. Okay. It was like they were peering in deep into my heart. It's okay, you've got to freak out. potential waifu with you. I almost jumped off the ground with a start. I think she's hit him. Don't just talk to me like that. You scared the hell out of me. Wait, he said that in his head and he said, uh, I gestured with my head down the hallway. Erika looked past me into the darkness. Yes, that's the mood you want to set in a love hotel. Creepy. Was it? Was that all? Was I being too sensitive? I tried flipping the light switch on the wall next to me, but nothing happened. Maybe the bulbs were burnt out. Or maybe it wasn't the switch for this hallway at all. Damn it. This wasn't Wait, 14 was or 7 or something. Check that. Oh, 14 or 7. 2007 American horror movie about a hotel room where all the occupants commit suicide based on a work by the master of modern horror, Stephen Queen. <laughs> Stephen mm. Queen. Stephen Queen? It's meant to be a reference to Stephen King. Yeah, oh shit, fuck, I didn't. Because I was like, wait, what's that, Stephen? Like, I did read one of his... I, I read m most of his book series, the... the... You must Dark. have read The Shining, at least. No, then. no, I've not, no. I only read The not, Dark. Not The Shining? No. I'm, dude, I'm uncultured. Uh, but I'm anime culture. Um, the Dark Tower series. Like, my sister got me the first book as a gift, and it was, like, quite thin. Uh, ah. The Gunslinger, I think it was called. It was the first in the Dark Tower series. And I said, oh, this is nice. And then it just became a mammoth seven books. It was a seven book series, man. And each book got thicker and thicker. And I was like, what have you dropped me into? Because now that I've read the first one. And you know, I got the last book in the series and I never finished reading it. I mean, I, I think I read the first six. I think it's seven books in total. And I never finished the last one. And that was a that was almost a decade ago, man. Oh, time flies. I'm a ho And you know, in the first book, it's interesting. I can't remember how young I was, but in the first book... Stephen King talks about how, you know, I think it's maybe in the, I don't know what the prologue or the little intro sections that you get in the book. It talks about how you feel immortal at the age of 18. <laughs> and and as you grow older, you know, you, as you become slower and all that, you realize your, um, um, your mortality. And I was yeah. like, I was interesting because I, I don't think I was that far off that age. When you read it. When I started reading that, so you know, I can tell you how long I was, how long ago that was. Um, but anyway. You want to write a letter and just say, my man, 
You're right. You were right. I mean, I didn't. I didn't disagree <laughs> with them when I read that. So, uh, like, I thought that must be true. <laughs> you were miserable back then. Oh yeah. What the? Wait. What the? Oh whoa! Yes. I turned around, and for some reason, I was looking down at the skirt of my friend because I'm a perv. The only for some reason, I was waist height. Yeah. What the? The only person there was Serica. No one else was looking at me. I took some time to make sure of it before I spoke. Eyes up here. I okay. I Thank you for, you know, they don't show the sprites a lot of the times, but when they do, we get a crotch shot. <coughs> or was there something important in the fact that he didn't look at her face at that point? I don't know about that, but, you know, I definitely got the sense that he was looking down. Serica nodded cheerfully and stayed behind me as we walked deeper into the hallway. I remembered the location of the window I'd seen outside. It was probably deeper in the hall. The furthest one back or the one before him. He remembers. I walked as silently as I could down the long hallway towards the last rooms on the left side. With every step I took, I could feel the sensation of the hallway floor through the bottom of my heels. It was like I was being forced to think about nerves that I had never used. My body felt very tense. I didn't see any cops in the hallway. Usually they'd at least leave one person here at the scene. Was this the wrong floor? Oh. We reached the second to last door. Room 306. Well, here we go. Well, I told you this is going to be a positive run because uh, I'm such a positive person. <laughs> yeah. Biggest lie of my life. I listened carefully, but didn't hear anything revealing. Damn, no juicy noises. Just a quiet rumble of the air conditioner. He's going to think about more girl-on-girl -girl action. Ha! <laughs> people. I feel like there's not going to be a people into a love. There shouldn't be. Into, yeah. I, <laughs> wait a minute. There shouldn't be, but this is Japan, and uh, there's always the possibility. Um, come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Also, you don't get people that look into the room. They always look out of the room. Did she just go and knock the door? Oh, yeah. You're a psycho. What? Let us see what happens what is... in his mind. And suddenly the door opened. We didn't expect anyone to open it. Both Serik and I froze. And then they came out. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm not going to say no to this. <laughs> well, this guy can't say no. It was a voluptuous woman with long hair, and she was completely naked. Wait, why is... That explains... No! Oh, <laughs> why is it censored? No, that explains why the whole screen is just white, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, can't wait. show this on YouTube. Wait, I got this rough steam. Is this... Wait, is this... Uh... No, I wouldn't expect this type of game to have that sort of scene in it. Maybe he's imagining it. Remember we chose positive? He's imagining this, but he's not going to show it on this. Not on this game. This is not a hentai game. This is not Quakari. Sad times. <laughs> I, I mean, that's good. Good. Sensible. Mm. And not only that, her body was as nice as any you'd see in a magazine. Good to know, Taku-chan. Wait, didn't she look like a... A lot like a model or actress I saw on TV. Uh, you're behind me. I'm in front. No, wait. She knocks. She was in front. Shit. You can stop. She's, she's, she's in for your vision. This has turned awesome all of a sudden. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of delusion I expected a, uh, a teenager to have. Wait, what are you talking about? This is the kind of delusion I'd have still, man. What the hell? <laughs> 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 I 
お嬢さんも一緒でも。The more the merrier. In other words, what exactly? Can we drop the like, potential murder storyline? Can we just follow this? I'll make you feel great, so come on in, okay? Uh... Go in, of course. What the fuck? Have a good time. Zip. <laughs> uh, as, as he tried to reverse psychology, it's like, oh, why? You want us to go in? I mean, I don't want to go in here, but okay, if you want to go, Serika. She's got that tone in her voice. Serika's face was red with embarrassment. He whispered softly. But. <laughs> this is definitely a fucking delusion. <laughs> Switch off. Uh, this can't be happening! It fucking Kai, the best pet! What the hell? Is this the sequel to freaking Eternal Darkness that I've always wanted? No. It but it's getting there. Eternal Darkness? Uh, have you not played Eternal Darkness? Sanity's Requiem on the, uh, on the GameCube. No. A lot of sanity effects, like fake scenes, the game tricking you into thinking you have, you've deleted your data instead of saved it. Oh, wow. Um, tilting the thing, uh, controls fucking up. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, fake scenes. So, you know, this is a fake scene, obviously. Uh, I mean, fake to you, real to me, man. But, guys, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, also sounds mental. Um, Very good. Something was wrong with me. So no, mate, you're just a teenager. <laughs> oh shit, he said that out loud. Damn it. I said what I was thinking out loud. Yeah, just, just say it. Just say it. I was, I was thinking, what if you and I went into this room you with this fucking... stunningly hot, naked lady? Shut up, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> fucking get <laughs> ostracized from society. <laughs> <laughs> One... Just say it. No, you you can yeah you can say that now, but you wouldn't say that in his position. As a teenager, no, I'd blush. As an adult, <laughs> I was like, I just randomly had a fantasy while we're ex we're trying to like um break into this horrible crime scene and find out what's going on. Yes, I am a psychopath. I'm something fucking Damn really it. twisted with me. Let's just admit this to my f my childhood friend. Um. Also, I was thinking that we would have a threesome with a random hot woman and you in this love hotel. Highly inappropriate. And that she was into it. Yeah, and that you wanted to do it, not me. Um, oh, that Definitely not me. That's, that's not going to get you in trouble. You just, just be honest. Just admit what you think. Just to say to everyone what your fantasies are. Um, Erica was still knocking on the door to room 306, but no one was answering. Oh, so she did knock on it for fuck's sake. Of course. It, we, it, that happened before the whole transition into oh. the AI. She's mental, man. What the fuck? That's... Okay, there's some noise. <laughs> I flinched back at the sudden noise. <laughs> Was that the sound of breaking glass? <laughs> he was clinging to my back in surprise, with the hands on my shoulders. <laughs> it felt good. Erika <laughs> pointed to the next room. We stood there for a moment. The violent sound must have scared her, because Serika's easygoing mood had totally vanished. But we waited a while, and nothing more happened. There were no voices or sounds of struggle. The hallway was the same as ever, but by imagining it, it was a hall a little darker than before. Mo <laughs> That would be a sensible thing to do. Let's not uh, endanger our lives for a story. Serika didn't answer my question. She didn't seem afraid, but she had a serious look on her face as she stared down the hallway. 
Maybe something had happened and the killer was still there? No, wait. I need to think about this rationally. There was an officer on the first floor who had called, called for backup. Usually, when a call came in, the police never came there alone. There was always more than one. I found that out for myself during my reporting, so I was sure of it. So there had to be another officer at the scene, but the killer couldn't just be hiding there. If there was any chance of that, the cop wouldn't have just told us to go back to our rooms. Did the killer break the glass during a struggle? No, that didn't make sense either. If there was any chance of them being able to do that, would that officer have gone downstairs? Probably going down there to tell the front desk not to let anyone else in. <laughs> like you two. So there's two officers, but that officer was freaking the shit out. So either the other officer is up here, the other officer's a man down. Hmm. I had no proof, but it should be okay. More than anything, I hadn't taken any photos yet. So clearly I can't go back empty handed. Oh, uh, what? I jumped literally when I heard the sudden sound. It was a very strange sound, one that didn't belong here at all. I looked and saw that Serika had gotten so nervous she'd taken out her ghetto froggy ghetto 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 row strap and started to play with it. She probably didn't even know she was doing it. I softly poked her with my elbow. I motioned for her to keep quiet. And she seemed confused, but then she realized what she was doing and quickly put the strap back in her pocket. As, ah, nervous ticks. As soon as she was done, I looked down the hall once more. All the way to the front of the room. You should head there. I tried to steal myself, then checked over my shoulder once more to make sure no one was there. I started to walk forward very carefully. I was afraid of making even the slightest sound. Erica followed me wordlessly with her hand on my shoulder. I grabbed her hand with my free hand, the other was holding my smartphone. She squeezed it tight. The feeling of her fingers kept me strong as I walked forward. The next room. Room 305, room at the far end of the hallway. It's like room 306, it had a plain old door, but it felt like it was exuding an intense pressure. She was asking about the sound. I answered, despite not having any proof at all. We waited, but still heard nothing. I looked around once more to make sure no one was there and put my ear up against the door. These guys are way too fucking nervous. They're dragging it out, man. And then... I heard a small sound. It was a sound that I'd heard outside. A sound from the windows, like a music box playing. It was relaxed and peaceful, even if we weren't, and played the same tune over and over. Erika was looking at me. This is the time for a fucking positive delusion. Let's break this door down and then shoulder barge it, man. Like a fucking badass. Yeah, he'd just break every bone in his body. I don't think this guy's that <laughs> well built for this. That's why I said it's a positive delusion. No, that's... I hesitated. But she put her hand on the doorknob. Uh, what are the odds that I would be locked, huh? She seemed relieved, but a little upset. I knew exactly how she felt. I felt the same way. I moved away from the door. I would have liked to take some photos before I left, but... Huh? <laughs> Yep. Yep. That was what it sounded like. That is what the little image showed me. We were too confused to move. There was no sign of anyone coming out. I slowly touched the doorknob. It was, it was at this point. 
<laughs> and it was at this point he knew that he'd fucked up massively do you know like if i was standing at the store and i was being creeped out and they've kind of made this like i'm starting to feel a bit anxious now right and like um if the door just randomly unlocked i would nope the fuck out of the hotel and go back to school i'm like i'm not i'm not going in there man hmm i mean assuming they can get past the police at the bottom but yeah oh it turned the door was unlocked. How? Clearly someone's unlocked on the other side, mate. As if guided by all the strange things that were happening, I pushed the record button on my smartphone. Ah, that good 720p resolution. Um, Not full HD, but kind of HD. I gripped the doorknob tighter. The voice in my mind told me to stop. The voice of reason. To go back, but it was wiped out by the sound of the smartphone recording starting and the door slowly opening. The more it opened, the less I was able to ignore my curiosity. And the closer I stepped towards death. It felt like something besides Serica was pushing me forward as I opened the door. That song was playing in the dimly lit room. All the lights were off, but the sun outside was streaming through the open window. Its light was very weak. So the curtain in front of me, which partitioned off a part of the room, was blocking the light. Let me guess, that curtain partitions the bed, doesn't it? I gulped. I realised my lips were dry. I ran my tongue over them to wet them a little, and then I realised my heart was pounding. The sound was so loud I thought my heart might have somehow moved up into my ears. It seemed to be beating out some bizarre rhythm and it was making me sick. I forced myself to swallow my saliva and hoped it would keep me from throwing up and I took a slow step forward. I held up my phone to record what I was seeing and then I realised something. That curtain wasn't partitioning the room. It was a bed. Called it. There was a raised spot off the floor with a circular bed, surrounded by a curtain. Fancy. The light was streaming out from behind it. The windows we'd seen were on the other side of it. And the song seemed to be coming from there as well. <laughs> Crap. It's too dark. I went to flip the nearby light switch, then forced myself to stop. No. I couldn't touch anything in the room. Some kind of crime must have taken place here. This is the first line of sense I've heard from him today, or throughout the game. But I was scared to go any deeper into the darkness. My shoes made my steps loud against the floor. There was no response, only the relaxed melody. I gave a signal to Serica, who was still behind me, and went deeper into the room. What? For a moment, I just... Yeah, because you're stepping on the floor. Come on, man. No, 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 no. This, he would have, this would have been him hearing something else moving at a different thing to his. It felt like I was hearing it between the gaps in the music box melody. But there was no change that I could see. No one jumped out. Nothing was moving. There was just the sound of the music box. I looked from one part of the room to another to make sure nothing was amiss. And then I slowly moved forward. Finally! A girl in a seemingly school uniform. Someone was lying on the floor. She's got like the ribbons in both her uh, uh, pigtails. When my eyes adjusted to the gloom, I saw. A police officer. And. A woman. The officer was lying up against the bathroom with his legs splayed and his head drooping. 
The girl was lying on the floor face down. They showed no sign of noticing us. Of course they wouldn't, they're fucking unconscious or dead. No, that wasn't right. The glass behind them was shattered into a thousand pieces. Yabai. Crap. <laughs> The second I understood what was going on, the hand holding the smartphone started to shake. Crap, crap. I could see a little blood dripping off the police officer's head. I spun around as I heard the sound. More creaking. Oh no, a shower curtain. Do you see that general outline? Yeah, it's... Mm. I'm guessing right we'll see what it is but I think it's uh... the... get the um... you want to get this text box out of the way I think it's a dead body it's uh, yeah that line is going both ways not just one way it's being yeah. held up by uh, those cables metal metal wires around his neck there's mm -hmm. so there's the head cable 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 and he's around the neck yeah and he's like hung. Yeah. The warmth drained from my face in an instant and my whole body shivered. Someone was sitting on the bed. <laughs> I staggered back and slammed into Serika. <laughs> I couldn't move. And Serika just stood still. Weird. My hand was frozen as it pointed the smartphone towards whoever was behind the curtain, and it wasn't doing what I told it. What? Film? Damn it. I took a step back, tripped, and then fell to the floor. <laughs> this guy continues to be lame as fuck. <laughs> this is exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> My lungs weren't working right. The silhouette moved a little, and I flinched. No, it didn't move. The bed was rotating. Whoever was behind the curtain showed no sign of noticing us. They didn't budge an inch. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh no. What the fuck? Erica's voice sounded like it was far away. <laughs> Is this guy going to go through every guttural grunt he can possibly make? The type that you usually hear in a love hotel, but not in this context. Um, you can make a pretty good remix track out of it all. <laughs> I ran back to the entrance and slammed myself onto the door. It wasn't opening. It wasn't opening. I could yell back at me. Erica screamed as she slammed against the door. <laughs> I helped to try to batter it down. I like how it's showing us there's the little uh, the, the switch just there, just you know, just the, fucking the lock. I'm just... gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they actually twisted that, but All right. <laughs> I'm giving them that benefit, right? I don't know if they deserve it. But it didn't work. It was all like trying to batter down a wall. <gasps> Suddenly, I heard a knock at the door. I reflexively jumped away without thinking. It was coming from this door. The knocking was rhythmic and constant. Someone likes to play music while knocking the door to in rhythm to it. It was just a knock at the door, but my whole body started to shake. Someone was on the other side of the door. Someone was knocking. It definitely wasn't the police. It felt as if my sanity was boiling away, melting out from the soles of my feet on upward. <laughs> You remember we had a comment in one of these videos about the, the translation for this? Yeah. I'm wondering if I should try and download that patch. 
because some of it seems a bit off. Don't open that door. Right, go out the back. Okay. I grabbed Serika's hand and ran to the back of the room. Wait, who opened the curtains? And fell silent at what I saw. You gonna show us, mate? What was that? Yeah. Yeah, called it. The curtain was open. There was a man exactly there. Exactly right. Sitting. No, he was moving slowly. The bed was moving in time to the sound of the music box. Wait. Is that just tightening tighter and tighter as he rotates? And an eerie sound came from the wire trapped around his neck. <laughs> the wire was hanging down from the ceiling, choking him. His face was all puffed up in a colour I'd never seen before. His pants were wet and the stain extended to the bed itself. The smell of piss and shit hung in my nose. He wasn't alive. He was dead. What the fuck? What on earth was he expecting? I know he's seen the other, like, other crime scenes. Why was he dead? Did he suffocate? Why was the curtain open? Yes, that's a good question. And what the hell was he doing? The curtain, the, the knocking on the door distracted them. Right, I'm just going to point out, remember the girl that was on the floor? The one that had the uh, blonde hair and the uh, twin tails. Yep. Yeah. I don't think she was unconscious. She didn't look like... They didn't, I didn't see any blood around her. She could have been awake. Because someone had unlocked the door for us. Uh, from inside this room. And someone's opened these curtains. So either her... The police officer... At this stage, we, there could be someone else. But it's either her, the police officer, or this dude who's... Quite... Uh, uh, quite enjoying themselves being hung up to dry. So, and the police officer looked like he was knocked out, bleeding from the head. I think she's involved in this somehow. If I was the police officer that was investigating this, I would say, oh, this just looks like some dodgy play that went bad. <laughs> Job done, let's go home. <laughs> You'd be a bad police officer. <laughs> it's like, who, who comes with this amount of cable work? <laughs> this elaborate fucking... <laughs> Bond BDSM play. Hey man, whatever he's into. <laughs> he's into dying. Um, <laughs> my right hand moved without me realizing it. Yes, I just subconsciously started recording. I needed to use the window to escape, but I pointed my phone's camera at the body instead. <laughs> now Serika's talking sense and wondering why he, this guy's being insane. A bit too late, eh? The body spun slowly. Each time it went around, the wire made an awful sound and dug deeper into his neck. Yeah, I thought so. I thought these cables were like, like stuck, attached statically, and as he's turning around, that's it's tightening, tighter and tighter until his head comes off. Oh, I was about to say eventually, yeah, I'll just sever his head. It dug in so deep by now that the man's neck was the size of my wrist. Uh, Is that what happened to Kurisu? Kirisu? <laughs> Kirisu, sorry. Just talking about a neck. Oh, oh, just, oh, dude. The skin must have been broken because it was bleeding a little. At least the knocking stopped. <laughs> what am I? You only realize this now, you. Let's. Can I just remind everyone that's watching this, right? This guy has photos of previous crime scenes and he suspected this is the same t crime spree. And in the previous crime um, crimes, it's included a man that has chopped his own arm off and was eating it on stream. And a woman that had a, a Bluetooth speaker embedded in her stomach as she played the guitar on the street and then died of the bleeding. 
So I do... I mean, compared to that, yeah, definitely compared to that second one, this is relatively tame. Like, what in the hell was he fucking expecting? <clears throat> He's the one that's new. He knows more than even the police on this. Dumbass. Jericho was right next to me, but her voice sounded far away like she was talking through a telephone. I needed to get out of here, but I couldn't stop the filming. Why was I doing this? This is what we're all asking ourselves, Taku. Why are you doing this? Why was he dead? Who the fuck knows? Let the police find out. Exactly, and then read it in the news and then report about it later. The wire dug deeper and deeper into his neck without waiting for me to come up with an answer. The body turned away from me. I could see the back of his neck. The flesh around the wire was swollen red and black. I heard a muffled sound, like something hard snapping inside of a bag. Oh. The head slumped just a little. His neck had just broken and for some reason he got some life into him to be able to look up into the sky again. That must have been the sound of neck breaking. That must have been the sound of neck breaking. Mm. It's okay, it's okay, sir. I've got it on camera. It's alright, he's dead now. He can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> now, since we're in a love hotel, zip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You've got me doing it now. Um, I could hear Serika's voice. Get out of here. Get out of here? <laughs> so that That's right, this is bad. I need to get out of here. Oh shit, he's still knocking. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait for them to be implicated in this incident by the police. Oof, my body moved as I heard another sound. I spun around. Um, oh, fuck me! Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I knew it was happening at some point. Fuck this game. <laughs> oh, one second. Oh, Oh. Did that really get you that badly? I, I, fucking, I knew it was going to happen, right? I don't, I've, I'm a sucker for jump scares, even if shit. Fuck this game. Um, I told you she was alive. Man, that is the most exclamation mark, exclamation mark I've ever heard. I screamed. I shot myself. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. And then I heard something from behind me. The head's going to pop off, isn't it? I've been waiting for this. I don't know what I did. But the next thing I knew... Oh. My whole field of vision had turned red. And I felt something like a ball hit me. Before I could understand what it was, everything faded to black. You got fucking knocked out. September the 30th, 2015, Wednesday. The last day Wait. of my life. Wait, is that the next day now? I think so. Because 29th was when they were going, right? And what I'm going to do is, on that note... Don't do this! Yes! Because Don't just do about, this! A, Don't be a prick! <laughs> because it's a pain <laughs> <laughs> hour! Hey, come on! Yeah! Ah. Oh. Yeah! Um, put on the avatars. Let's at least see this report! Eh? Finish the incident at the hotel! What? Nah, man, nah, man. Um, we can. Well, Bollocks. Man. Well, I'll tell you what, right? Our audience are going to have to wait for our next episode. But we can continue after this episode. For a new episode. <sighs> see? See? Good times, good times. Don't worry about it. Um, so it looks like some interesting stuff has happened. Finally, we saw the crime scene for the in this love hotel. I suspect the blonde girl is in on all of this. I suspect she was the one that opened the curtains and unlocked the door. So I think she's implicated in this somehow. That's my early she predictions. She had eyes that were bleeding. Hey, you can do that with makeup, mate. You can do that with mate, fake I, stuff. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that our guy's eyes went red. His vision went red. So perhaps he also suffered some sort of bleeding incident as well potentially but he could have just, just saying. conked out either way I mean he's definitely fainted from all the shit that's just gone down 
Um, but yeah, this has been interesting. Well, what's going to happen next on Ash Mannix and Cook Soul Place? Chaos Child. Um, I'm shaking my head so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully you'll be eager to see what happens next. Um, I mean, if you want, you, you know, I, I would recommend you guys play this. Read this visual novel along with us. Uh, and, you know, when you get to a section done, you can then watch us play it and uh, react badly to it. Um, and that way, everyone wins. Um, or you can just wait to the next episode, either way. But uh, for now, I'm Ash Mannix. And I am Cookcell. And we will see you next time. Hopefully. Bye. Let us.